in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Today, dear friends, we celebrate the solemnity of solemnities in the great feast of Easter. And may I, as I always do, introduce our team here. Alessandro on my left here, our talented Italian film producer, our skilled brother Richard, <laughs> iconographer extraordinary, and of course our loving and lovely young married couple, Giselle and Paul, whoever you are, dear friends, wherever you are in the world, you're heartily welcome to celebrate our Easter Garden Mass. We ask the Lord, as we always do, to look upon us with kindness and mercy. This day was made by you, Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We give thanks to you, Lord, for you are good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for your love has no end. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people, people of good goodwill. Will. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, we adore, adore you, you, we glorify you, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks for, for your great glory. glory. Lord God, God Heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only, only begotten, begotten Son, Son. Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with, with the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the, the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let <clears throat> us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead and he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The response is, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth, because you have died, and your new life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ, Christ our, our Passover, Passover has, has been sacrificed. sacrificed. Let, Let us celebrate, celebrate the feast then, then in the Lord. The Lord. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, spirit. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but he did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> Dear friends, when we face the death of someone we love, we face an unspeakable loss. A future is mapped out for us where there will always be a large absence. Sometimes the finality of the loss is so great that there is a denial of death itself. People tell you they hear the footsteps of their loved one on the pathway outside. They hear his key turning in the lock. They see them on a street and follow them for a while, only to be confronted by the puzzled look of a stranger. Sometimes the denial takes the form of searching for the lost one. Like Anne, the widow of the French actor Gérard Philippe, who wrote to her dead husband, I went to find you, a mad rendezvous. I remained outside reality without being able to go in. The tomb was there. I could touch the earth that covered you. And without being able to help it, 
I began to believe that you would arrive soon, a little late as usual, that soon I would feel you approach me. There was no point in telling myself that you were dead. You weren't coming. No, you were waiting for me in the car. A mad hope that I knew to be mad still. It overtook me. <coughs> yes, he's waiting in the car. I consoled myself. And when I found it empty, I protected myself once more. Oh, he's taking a walk on the hill. I went down to the house, talking to friends the while, looking for you on the road. When Mary of Magdala goes to visit the tomb of Jesus, she expects to keep a rendezvous with death. It's very early on the first day of the week, it's dark, but there's light enough to see that the stone has been moved from the entrance to the tomb. Mary's reaction is not relief that Jesus is no longer dead. She doesn't cheat herself in her thinking with that mad hope. The only conclusion she can come to is that some unknown people have stolen the body of Jesus from the tomb. When Simon Peter and the beloved disciple hear Mary's story, they run to the tomb. The account in John's Gospel is written clearly in favour of the beloved disciple. He is the figure of love. Peter is the figure of authority. They set out together, but of course the beloved disciple gets there first and then he waits for Peter to catch up and allows him into the tomb first. When Peter goes into the tomb he sees linen cloths just lying there. When the beloved disciple goes into the tomb he sees and he believes. The disciple who was closest to Jesus in love is the one who is first to believe in him as the risen Lord. Perhaps the evangelist John is telling us that love always sees in the dark what other people do not see. The beloved disciples are always the people who get to the heart of the matter first. What we celebrate in the resurrection, dear friends, is God's liberating love for his beloved son. Resurrection is the Father's response to the cross, his defiant answer to those who hoped that violence would keep Jesus down forever. In raising Jesus from the dead, the Father raised every story that Jesus told, every value that Jesus cherished, every preference that Jesus made, every purpose that he ever followed. All this was given new life and significance. If death had spoken the final word about Jesus, it would only have been a matter of time before everything about Jesus would have been reduced to a curiosity, a forgettable footnote in the crowded history of lost causes. But God has the last word, indeed, as he had the first. The resurrection of Jesus is not a hysterical invention of people who refused to accept the death of their master. On the contrary, the resurrection is the original act of accepting Jesus' death. The Father's act of raising Jesus from the dead is the Father's way of accepting Jesus' death. Jesus is wakened to new life 
He's wakened to the applause of his father by the sheer energy of his father's love, by the loud shout of his father's gratitude. The dead Jesus has no alternative but to rise. The good news, dear friends, is that the Father's affirmation is not confined to the person of Jesus. It's extended to all who follow the way of the beloved Son. As Paul says in today's reading, when Christ is revealed and he is your life, you too will be revealed in glory with him. In the meantime, we struggle to let a wee bit of the glory shine through. We can catch something of the resurrection, the reality of it, when we experience new life in the midst of what appears to be utter hopelessness. We see it in hospital wards and in so many homes around the world when tired nurses and exhausted carers hug people back from death. We see it in the brave women and men who risk their life protesting against the mindless violence inflicted on their fellow human beings. We can see it in the beloved disciples of the world who still see in the dark what no one else sees. Why? Because they look with love. For all this we rejoice. It's Easter in our midst. It's the refusal, dear friends, like the first Easter, to accept that anyone should just be left for dead. We stand and profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Christ our hope is risen. On this glorious day we bring prayers to the one who has conquered death. We pray for Pope Francis and all priests. We ask that this Easter is a blessing to them, that remembering and celebrating your death and resurrection would fill them with the joy of Easter. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our leaders. We ask that they would be able to take time to be with their families and loved ones. We ask that the sacrifice of Jesus for all would be inspiration for those in positions of power. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. This is the second Easter that is a far cry from normality. We ask that we can celebrate this day that changed history forever, even if we are on our own. The gift of Christ's death and resurrection is still cause for shouts of Alleluia. Yet we know the pain that many are living with, so we pray for those who are lonely, tired, grieving and fearful. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us.
Dear friends, thank you sincerely for continuing to send in your prayer intentions and as usual, I'll read four of them. Dear Father Dennis, Father Richard, Alessandro, Giselle and Paul, Easter blessings and greeting to you from Copenhagen in Denmark. We are a Danish, Scottish, Caribbean family mm -hmm. who live here with three children, 15, 17 and 19. Mixed family, or as you would say, the hyphenated people. The three kids loved your retreat reflection on Jojo, the kid from a mixed family, and they said you caught their situation beautifully. Many thanks for giving them a voice. We love attending your Mass every week with your wonderful team while appreciating the beauties of nature at the same time, although it does look windy and cold at times. Glad Brother Richard had a special pair of gloves for his artist's hands. Please ask all your kind people to pray for our Scottish grandmother who lives alone in Aberdeen. In spite of all the Zooms, she's hopelessly lonely and longs for a warm, lasting hug and a real blether, as she calls it, face to face. She's starved of human touch and family warmth, saying that all the simple things we took for granted have been taken away from us. But we know now, she says, what are the important things in life. Please remember her and all the kind grandparents who long for a simple day to come when they can hug their family again. God bless you and all your work. Dear Father Dennis and team, it's really been a year since we joined you all. We have so appreciated and look forward to Sunday Mass with you and indeed with so many people around the world. Sadly, we're about to say goodbye as we have at last restarted Masses in our parish. Who knows what the future will bring, but please know how much we valued your guidance and your selection of poetry, which of course is music in words. Stay safe, and we hope you can carry on bringing Christ to our wonderful multifaceted society. Thank you again. Dear Father Dennis, whether in your artistic living room or beautiful courtyard garden, we have been blessed with benefiting from Holy Mass, celebrated by you, with the assistance of Alessandro, Brother Richard, Giselle and Paul during the year. First of all, we would like to ask prayers for our dear friends Noel and Bill. In her mid-70s, Noel has been suffering for about 15 years with an unusual form of dementia affecting her sight. And now, in her advanced age, she has recently been admitted to a local nursing home. Having enjoyed singing all her life, and performing in choirs, her one enjoyment now is music. Her husband Bill would appreciate prayers for him, for her rather, and for all their family as she moves to the next phase of life. We would like also to recommend your prayers for dear friend Stan, also in his mid-70s, who suffers from an unusual form of dementia, and his wife Ellen. As Helen asks us to say to you, Dan currently is at an advanced age, unable to walk, talk or feed himself. Yet he is content and he's often joyful. With the help of carers four times a day, Helen is able to look after Dan at home. She would really appreciate your prayers for both of them. Wishing you all continued health and well-being. Dear Father Dennis, Brother Richard, Alessandra, Giselle and Paul, well, I feel all your homily was for me tonight when I watch. I wonder if others feel the same. 
Thank you and your wonderful team who bring the joy of the Mass to me during this time. I have been a regular for 12 months and live in Australia, where while COVID has been here, we have been blessed as our numbers have not been enormous like other places. Loss and grief have been in my life, children, grandchildren, son. I am blessed with a daughter-in-law and husband and other loved ones. But somehow God has sustained me. Please pray for James, who has had three minor strokes. He's only 57. While not badly affected, it's been a shock and he cannot work. I cared for his father for almost 26 years. Also my daughter, who's awaiting tests. Love your garden setting and your beautiful masses. The lovely young couple, Alessandro and you all, even Brother Richard, give a blessing to us all. Thank you. God bless and take care. God our Father, on this great solemnity of Easter, we recommend these spoken and unspoken prayers to you. We ask you this in the name of the one that you raised from the dead, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Amen. Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us, us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Easter edition of the tablet, 1992. They published a poem by a Polish priest poet, Franciszek Kameki or Kameki, forgive my pronunciation, 1992. I took a copy of it and I believe someday this will prove useful. <laughs> I've waited a while, but I think, today, <laughs> I think today is the day. It's lovely. It's called the Execution Squad. We were very much on the alert, General, 
Our eyes promptly caught every rustle of leaves, and we quickly turned our bodies where a fish splashed in the reeds. From ten at night we stood courageously, pacing with bent backs under the trees, on tiptoes with our lips sealed. Every two seconds, with stopwatch in hand, we looked at the tomb Joseph of Arimathea had built, where they put the convict who had been crucified apparently for inciting the people, for criticising the authorities without reason, and for many other offences known to criminologists and hangmen. Our security was guaranteed by Pilate's regulations, by the seals on the grave, by the stone that barred exit to the corpse. So said our experts, nothing can frighten us. Sir, we watched the tomb on the whole garden in case the convict tried to slip out across the cabbage patch. Nobody was naive. Nobody believed when the convict said that on the third day he would escape from the cemetery and join the travellers who have been walking for a thousand years looking for a guide over their shoulder because they do not know where to go. The sergeant changed guards very punctually he rubbed his hands in wry amusement as if he knew the shameful end of this man's prophecies. I was warming my hands by the fire, the lapels of my army coat fluttering in the wing. A lance corporal, I don't know why, muttered Alleluia. We are idiots, General, and are you any better since you did not even bother to look for him in the garden, but believed in him without protest. Pity you did not wait until morning, perhaps in the early morning. We did not even manage to get the alarm bells to ring. The dog did not even bark. The grass did not even sing. The garden wasn't even burnt down, so simply did the convict walk out. Together with the night, sir, he walked out together with the night, and he was sentenced in vain. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O Lord, with unfailing love and favour, so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the Resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Thank you very much, dear friends, and stay well, stay safe, stay generous. And of course, especially on this Easter Sunday, renewed thanks to all the kind people who are continuing to help us with our donations and our charitable outreach. So it's happy Easter from me. Yes, indeed. Happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter. Easter. <laughs> Bona Pascua. Bona Pascua. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you all. <laughs>